In today's video, we're going to learn an effective way to create this program diagram using Adobe Illustrator. It can be used in so many different projects and I think you're really gonna like this one. So without further ado, let's get started, shall we? What's up guys, Ographics in here. My name is Oliver and welcome back to another video. Now just before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I create weekly videos all about architectural representation and visualization. I don't know if you noticed, but we just hit 80,000 subscribers, which is insane to just even think about it. Thank you so much for the support, guys. So if by the end of this video you learned something, don't forget to give a like. And as always, if you've got any questions, please drop them down below. I'll be happy to help. Now let's jump into the video. Alright, so as always we first start over our 3D software, in this case SketchUp, but you can swap it for Rhino, Blender, Archicad, whatever, just make sure to follow the workflow for this first part. So here I have modeled a basic volumetric diagram. This isn't a real project, the main goal is to teach you a process. Now all of these blocks are color coded so that we save time later when working with the shapes. We don't want to lose track of the volumetric types. Now what I'm basically doing is just duplicating each type so that we have them separate for the diagram. Align them and make sure that these duplicates are not covering each other because this will be useful in the future. Then activate the parallel projection and go to ISO view. To finish off the SketchUp part, we just gotta export a PDF image file. It has to be PDF because we're going to work with vector shapes in this video. You know, for these kinds of diagrams, Adobe Illustrator is the best option of all. I often use Photoshop here on the channel, even for diagrams, mostly because Photoshop gives you more overall freedom while doing certain things, especially when talking about overlaying textures but also because you guys seem to like more of Photoshop stuff than anything else. Now so that I can organize myself for future videos, let me know in the video voting poll what do you prefer, Photoshop only, a lot of both, mix to use, I don't know, just comment down below your suggestions, I would love to know what you think. Awesome, let's stop wasting time and jump into Adobe Illustrator. Here, drag and drop the PDF file to open it into a new document. Listen, you gotta have it as a new document so that we can individually select the elements. Really important step here, guys. I usually cut and paste the elements into my working document, but this step is up to you. All right, now, as you can see, PDF files from SketchUp come with two types of elements, lines and fills, separately. We want only the fills, so select one of the black lines and go up there to select, same, stroke color and delete all the lines at once. We did this because Illustrator deals greatly with both things, lines and fills, over the same object. Alright, so the color scheme I chose for this video is this one. I got some references from Adobe Color website and tweaked a little bit to fit my liking. I needed six colors that had a contrast between them. So, to still be aesthetic pleasing, I chose to use pastel colors. Over SketchUp, we didn't have to worry about the exact colors we were using, they just needed to be different from each other. Now, we're going to take care of that. So, just like we did with the lines, select any shape and go to Select, Same, but this time choose Fill Color. Finally, using the eyedropper tool, shortcut I, left click over one of the colors from the color scheme that we have on the file pretty simple right and the cool thing is that this workflow changes the colors from the whole file which includes the individual blocks as well so do these steps for all the colors and also pay attention to how well these colors go next to each other if you don't have any sort of pre-established guide you have to follow, I would suggest trying different color layouts to get the best result possible in terms of visual aesthetic. Next, we shall add a stroke to all of the objects. So select the objects and double click over the stroke area and choose black. 
reduce the weight to 0.25 or something like that. After that, let's organize our layers. So differently from Photoshop, but with the same thought of having an organized file, we can use layers kind of as groups. So one for the color scheme, one for the big block, and one for the individual volumes. Create a new layer here on the bottom, then select the items you want to move to this new layer. After that, click and drag on this little square right here and drag it to the new layer. An easy way to select things instead of that plain, regular selection is to use the shortcut Q for lasso tool. Next, let's move on to the individual elements. Here, I'm just grouping all the shapes of the same volume so it is easier to move them around in the canvas. Ctrl G is the shortcut for that. Then you can align these individual volumes much quicker using the Align tab. After that, you can go to any website that provides free icons. I really like one called Flat Icon. So download them in PDF, SVG or even EPS files, which can be opened in Illustrator as vector shapes. And then we can start to create our icon circles. Keep in mind that you can always be minimal about these figures and create them yourself. Which is quite interesting to do because you make your image really unique. The steps here are basically subtracting our icons from the circle. Make sure to center the symbol inside the circle and then once you're finished, go ahead and add the texts that describe what each of these tags means. For example, you can use this to create a diagram of uses and functions in your student housing project. Or, if you have a cultural center with a couple of buildings converging to a public square, you can classify them so that the client or your professor easily know what is going on on the site as a whole. Finally, group them individually using the shortcut Ctrl G and reposition them like so. Don't forget to use the Align tab to distribute evenly and align everything out. Alright, so to finish everything off, there's just one last move we gotta do, which is about a topic that I often talk here on the channel, the hierarchy within an illustration. In diagrams like this, the best way to create this contrast of interest is to use different stroke widths. So with this big group, we can select it all and Ctrl C, Ctrl Shift V to paste a copy in place. And then in the Pathfinder tab, add all the shapes. Take out the fill and make the stroke large, really large compared to the inner strokes. I went to, I think, 9 points, 10 points, something like that. All right. I think it turned out looking pretty good, and you saw that it is such a quick way to express ideas, especially during the beginning phases of a project where we are talking more of program, zoning and volumes, right? Well, we could go one step further here and make this illustration very unique by placing a hand as if it was inserting the last piece of this puzzle. You can either take a picture of your hand holding an object similar to these volumes and cut it out on Photoshop then import it into Illustrator, or just simply pick a hand from Google just like I did. Before importing the hand into Illustrator, I quickly open it in Photoshop and desaturate it completely. I feel that black and white here suits the composition much better since it doesn't compete visually with the other colors. To crop out an image here in Illustrator, here's what you gotta do. Create a shape where you want your image to be visible, then select them both and right click to choose Make Clipping Mask. Great! I'm going to choose one of these yellow blocks and turn it into a white field dashed stroke object. So I've selected all the shapes from this small volume, took out the field and placed onto the hand layer. After that, press the letter D to set the field and stroke to default. Then check the dashed line option and finally Add all the shapes using the Pathfinder. 
Alright, now it is a matter of duplicating a yellow volume and place it on the hand to pretend that it's actually holding this object. And to create this effect, we're going to mask it out using the transparency tab. Double click to enter the mask and draw black shapes where you want to hide the thumb or the fingers. Good, now to exit the mask just double click here on this thumbnail. And now since we have grouped all the shapes before masking it out, we can simply double click to enter this group and add a thicker stroke to create some emphasis. The workflow here to create the stroke is the same we used over the big block of volumes. Alright guys, that is it for today, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you want to get the video files to follow along the tutorial, just check the link in the video description. Also, don't forget to follow us at old.graphics on Instagram. Thanks a lot for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!